Yo, 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 you know what this is, man. It's your favorite channel, man. It's CTB. It's your Chantel Boxing. I'm your boy, Jay Slay. Say what up to him, man. What's up, everybody? Remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, comment. Let's keep this channel going. You know why? Because we love boxing, and you love boxing. That is a fact, most definitely. If it's your first time watching one of our shows, man, I please urge you, I please, I recommend you to subscribe to our channel, man. We drop great content on a weekly basis. Uh, to all our day ones, man, we greatly appreciate you guys for sticking with us through all our technical difficulties and learning on the job we've been going through. But we subscribe to make this channel the best source of boxing news, most definitely. So with that being said, bro, what's on the topic for the day? Deontay Wilder and Malik Scott recently had interviews discussing the upcoming fight with Fury. Let's talk about it for a second. All right, let's chop it up. Yeah, man, it's, it's, they full. They're pretty much in full press mode right now. Tyson Fury had his uh, his presser over there in the UK, uh, I think last weekend. Uh, so this week, pretty much uh, Wilder and Malik Scott has been on their press tour using their normal their normal media outlets. They used uh, shout out to Seven Eight Sports TV. Uh, he had the exclusive of Wilder and shout out to Drew Titan. He had the uh, exclusive of Malik Scott. So, I mean, they in full press mode, man. But both Malik Scott and Deontay Wilder had some dropped some bombs on us, though. They had some some new information that we wasn't uh, prepared for. Uh, what was the most thing? What was the thing that stuck out to you the most when it comes to both of their interviews? What was one of the uh, topics that caught your ear the first? Uh, um, at first. Uh, the, work, the first thing that caught my uh, ears were the weight. I thought for sure he would go back down to like his 220, 218 range and just do what he normally do. So when Malik Scott came out and said that he would probably be between 235 and 240, to me, it was time to shot. Yeah, most definitely. They shot me too. Uh, what, else, what also caught my ear too was the uh, the body work he said he was going to lay out on Fury. He's saying uh, he's going to pretty much barbecue some ribs and he was going to... Uh, barbecue some liver and all that you know what i'm saying so i mean we've seen the mix we've seen the mid work when it comes to like the, uh, the videos they put out on social media uh of course we know he's not going to sit down there in the pocket and throw four and five and six left hooks to the body we not we know that we, that's, that's just part of the mid work so you can get used to that movement you know what i'm saying you do that movement over and over and over again your body is muscle memory your body get used to doing that moment that's why you throw the punches repeatedly but now that I, he said that, I know that left foot to the body is going to be a key element, and those straight right hands to the body is going to be a key element. And I look forward to seeing how Fury take those shots, man. To be honest, uh, but when this guy had a long interview with Drew Titan, man, he he went in depth with a whole lot of stuff, man. He uh, even chopped up the legal as, uh, aspects of pretty much everything that happened and uh, what would happen if Fury decided to pull out of this fight. He pretty much touched bases on a lot of stuff. He said, uh, pretty much. Uh, I think it was Weinstein. The, uh, what was the arbitrator named Weinstein, right? I think it was Weinstein. Yeah, the arbitrator pretty much said uh, Fury has to fight a retire, and if he if he retires, then you know he has to pay Wilder some damage money. And on top of that, he's saying that since he lost arbitration, which I wasn't aware of this, uh, I think uh, this was Tay Jones. Tay Jones said that uh, Wilder would have to pay uh, Fury would have to pay Wilder's legal fees because of the loss he had for arbitration. So that would make Wilder in a serious financial hole right now, if you think about it. If what Bob Irm said back last summer was true, he's in the red with Tyson Fury. And if Tyson Fury, what Tyson Fury said was true, he spent millions, millions of dollars to uh, not fight Deontay Wilder this time. And that million, millions of dollars seemed to be doubled if, if what Trey, uh, Tay Jones said to be true, because now he has to pay lawyer, uh, Wilder's lawyer fees. What, what's, your th what's your thoughts about that, man? You think Tyson Fury regretting that? The decision to take it to arbitration, especially if he thought it was such an easy, uh, easy fight to have. You think he's regretting that? Because we kind of, we kind of told if it, people follow that channel, we kind of chopped this up in the detail. So, uh, trying to remind the fans what we talked about and give me your point of view on what you think Tyson Fury's next move should be. I mean, pretty much if you go to our old video, we pretty much told you step by step what was going to happen, how it was going to play out. We told y'all about the arbitration. 
when everybody thought it was a joke and everybody was laughing, saying that uh, Wilder was making a fool of himself. We was telling y'all that by the contract, he was that he was legally binded to fight him one more time. And if he didn't, there was gonna be consequences for probably money or for him uh, being stripped of the belt. You know, if it came out later on, it, that's exactly what happened. He pretty much had an uh, ultimatum to either fight uh, Wilder or be stripped and pretty much forced to retire. So, uh, I mean, as far as uh, the, the as far as him going, uh, not uh, paying the money, of course, I think it uh, affected him a lot. But the thing about it is, most uh, makes me feel better about the fight is when Wilder and Malik Scott came out and talked about it. I pretty much see now that if he backs out the fight, it's gonna cost him so much money that he's almost back to a corner. So at one time, if you ask me, I think we talked about it recently, I said it was like a 40% chance I thought the fight was going to get made. But now I feel a lot more confident that Fury's going to have to take this fight. So for me, the biggest thing that came out of the, to me was, I think October 9th, I feel confident. Now, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I still can see him finding ways to get out of because Fury is slick in the ring and out of the ring. But I feel a lot more confident that that fight is going to happen on October 9th. Yeah, I agree with you, man. It, it also made me more confident in the fight happening because I, I, the way I figured, uh, if Tyson didn't care about his reputation of uh, ducking out the fight, if he didn't care about that, he would most definitely care about being in that financial situation or financial hole. So I feel like he's now in that that round where I have to make this fight to get out of this financial hole that I'm in. That is also why I think he was naming so many opponents off the off the record. You remember his his press conference? He named off like five or six different fights. And people was wondering, like, why Tyson Fury don't fight that often? He usually only fight once or twice a year. Why are you talking about naming all these? It's now we know why, because he's in a financial deal, a financial debt where he has to fight often if he wanna if he wanna retire on time. Like he I think he had like a two year plan back when he fought Wiley the first time or something. So he way past that, mostly because of COVID, but he's way past his deadline of retirement. So now he's like, okay, I gotta hurry up and get these fights, get out of this hole so I can come back to the UK and fight my UK, my UK level fighters again. That's why in my opinion. Uh, but you you touched on the weight though. Let's talk more about the weight, man. Cause uh, back in, we made a video back in the day too about Tyson Fury. He said that uh, he was gonna come in at 300 pounds for this fight, and he was going to be like a semi truck running over uh, or Deontay Wilder. It seems to me in his press conference he's slimming up a lot, and uh, Malik Scott noticed it too. Malik Scott and Tay Jones noticed it. They saying he's looking a lot slimmer than 300 pounds. That he said he was gonna come in. He actually looking smaller than the 270 he was in earlier this summer he looks be to me tay jones say he looks to be more between 260 and two i think he said 250 and 260. so it seemed like fury is dropping weight and why they're talking about gaining weight so they, they might wind up being close to the same weight range this time what what is your thoughts about tyson fury's recent recent planning changes like his recent uh game plan change and to lose weight I think it's a mistake for him to lose weight. I think he needs to stay heavy because in the last fight, he kind of used his weight. He may know on Wilder a lot. He was um, stronger than him, you know, physically because they were, you know, a 60, 70 pound, you know, weight difference. So I thought he would want to keep that same um, weight, you know what I'm saying, difference. And also it, for his punch tolerance, by him being a little bit bigger, I thought that he would stick the weight. I think if he dropped down to 260, 255, I think is going to be a mistake for him. I think he needs to stay in that 275, 280 range. I think 300 pounds is too big for um, Fury also, but I think 280 is about right. The only thing, I'm, I'm wondering why he would want to drop down to 255 or 260, but then I, it just hit me. Could it be uh, already a building excuse? Because if, if he's dropped down to 255 and, and 260, and all of a sudden that knockout power is non-existent, he can say, well, Last fight, I was 285. I'm 260 now. I'm not as big as I was. So, of course, I'm not knocking him around the ring. So, it kind of makes you think a little bit what Fury might be up to. I, mean, I didn't think about that point. It might be a, it might be a reason why. Or, I think he listened to his father. His father did tell him, well, he didn't tell him, but he said in an interview that he was like, uh, that Crunk style was going to get him knocked out or he was going to get the knockout. He should mix the two the two fights together. So, I think, he, I think Fury's trying to do that. I think Fury's trying to blend a little bit of the first fight with a little bit of the second fight. I think he's trying to be light on his toes like he was in the first fight and try to make Wilder miss a lot. And, and pretty much try to outbox Wilder up until a point where he has to sit down on his punches. But I agree with you, man. I think it's gonna be a mistake to lose that weight. I think it's a mistake. And to be honest, I think it's a telling. It's a telling thing to me because 
before you caught COVID, allegedly, before you caught COVID, your whole plan was to run wild to over like a freight train or like a semi truck. You catch COVID, you go back to the UK, all of a sudden now your game plan has changed to dropping weight and, and possibly trying to outbox water now. So I got a question for you. Which one you which one you would lean more towards as the reason why? Would you lean more towards uh he can't cheat this time? So maybe he has to go more back to the first time and, and outbox for a wilder? Because he can't risk it in the pocket too long and it's changing if he don't have that quote unquote shave gloves this time. And Wilder's gonna be more ferocious this time because he doesn't have the quote unquote pause and water. Is that that's your op first option? Or your second option is he actually got hurt in sparring, trying to be 300 pounds and trying to use the crunk style just so he realized that this style is not going to work this time, especially on, like I said, a wilder that's more, more violent this time. So maybe he just had to change his game plan because of the, he had a rough sparring camp, a rough, a rough training camp this summer. Which one would you lean more toward if you had to pick one of those two? Or what's your, if you have a wild card, what's your wild card? I'm going to go with the first one. I think that he knows that he can't, if he cheated, he knows he's not going to be the full those same tap this out for this uh, third fight. So it would be smart for him to go back, like you said, to being more on his feet and being more well balanced than to actually try to uh, walk through wild. So I think that he's just trying to, like I said, maybe drop weight, get down to 255, 260, so he can stay on his feet. You know, he hit him a couple times, pit his hand up, uh, try to steal rounds, and, and try to win the fight on the scorecard. That that that's, that that was the one I would take. Yeah, I agree with you, man. I think his game plan will be to outbox him. Like I said, especially if you can do things like raise your hand and, you know, lift your tongue out and adjust to get you around, which is weird to me because we just watched a fight this weekend where uh, Valdez was getting, pretty much getting schooled in the ring. If you go by that judgment, Valdez was pretty much following around uh, Casta, or Casta's team. I can never pronounce the guy's name. The young guy's Rob, name. Robson. Robson, yeah. Robson was pretty much doing that same thing. He was pretty much raising his hand, taking scrolls in the middle of the fight and all that. But it seemed the judges didn't like that. He, he, one of the judges had a 10, with 117, 110. So apparently the showboat then didn't hit his opinion. It wasn't his uh, style of boxing. So let's see if Fury will get the benefit of the doubt when it comes to raising his hand and gloating in the middle of the fight, even though he's taking jabs and punches from uh, Wilder. Uh, but yeah, you got anything else you want to add to this topic, man? It was a long interview from uh, for Malik Scott. He gave a lot of jewels. So I'm pretty sure we'll probably find some more in there. Go ahead. I will say real quick, just real quick that I'm not in agreement with Fury losing weight, but I'm not in agreement with Wilder gaining weight. I don't like him going to 240, 235, 240. And the main reason why I say that, and you can touch on how you feel about it, is that I feel like his leg, his uh, naturally small legs. You know, some, some people's genetics, they just can't get big legs. And I'm, I'm afraid that he, if he gets too top heavy, It'll make him unbalanced and make his shots unbalanced. It could, it could, you know, it might not be the case, but I'm afraid of that because of the size of his legs and he get too big up top. So I'm 230, I might would have been okay with that, but if he gets up to 240, I don't like that either from his side. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they, I'm pretty sure they talked about that. Um, if he put up, if he go up that much weight, I'm pretty sure he learned his lesson from the second fight. I think a lot of the, wow. It's a possibility his water, his water was drugged. There's also a possibility, like you said, he was top heavy for a lot of those punches he was throwing, and they could have drained them more. Um, to be honest, I think the the, the weight gain from Elite Scott was talking about, I think it's all just talk because I haven't seen the, pit, the recent pictures of Wilder doesn't seem to me like he's putting on weight. It seems more like he's losing weight, like he's pretty much, you know, what I'm saying back to his neutral size. That's what it seemed like to me on tape, watching him in the uh, you know sparring and stuff. So there could be just talk from Elite Scott. But yeah, if that's the case, he is putting on weight, then yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I think you have to make it a well-rounded weight. Like, if you can't put it on your calves, like, people say skinny legs is, is not just coming from, like, his his calves, per se. It comes from his thighs and his quads also. So you can put on, no matter how small your legs are, you can still put on weight on your quads and your hams. You know what I'm saying? But your calves, calves is a, a, a genetic thing, quote-unquote. Everybody don't have big calves. Like me, myself personally, I, I can never be a bodybuilder because I, I wasn't born with big calves, even though I can probably bench, uh, squat most of more. Most people can't squat. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, not to go too much deep in detail, but yeah, I, I feel you. I agree with you on that that point. You got anything else you want to add to this topic, bro? I think we covered it off right now. Let the mind games begin. We less than a run away, and I think uh, Wilder Camp and Fury Camp will play a lot of mind games, going to throw a lot of stuff out, and it's for us and for you. They try to figure out if it's true or are they playing uh, games with each other. 
Most definitely. Last question. Do you think you think they have another press conference? You think why they're gonna do the headphone thing again? Or you think he's gonna feed into Fury? That's a good question, man. I'm gonna go with no headphones this time. I think last time I think last time that was a tactic he used and it actually messed with Fury head because I think they're gonna play a lot of games. So I think Fury gonna come out and expect him to do the same thing. And I think he's gonna switch it up. What what he's gonna do? Is he gonna be vocal? Is he still gonna be quiet? I don't know. But I don't think he can go with the headphones this time. But he's gonna come up with a tactic too, because they both playing games with each other. Yeah, they both playing games. I'm actually leaning more towards the headphones again. I think either either you're gonna have headphones again or he's just not gonna show up. It's gonna be one of the two. I don't. I don't see why they're going back and forth with with Fury at this time. It won't. It won't be. It won't be. Well, I don't think it'll be smart too. You already got. What you already in his headspace. I. I keep that. I keep that mystery a lot. But with that being said, man, it's your favorite channel, man. This is CTB. This is Chantel Boxing. I'm your boy Jay Slay. Say peace to him, man. All right, everybody, help us out. Remember to hit that subscribe button, like, comment. You comment and you like it more people see the video hit the notification button so you'll know when we drop a video we know why because you love boxing and we love boxing but most of all god peace and love and we out of here